Hey everybody, JC here, Monday night, November 11th. Happy Veterans Day, and a very special thank you for your service to all veterans out there. So I want to talk about the approaching cold tonight. First, this is a top-down view of Earth, looking at 250 millibar wind patterns, which is about 33,000 feet up above sea level. And if you look at the purple area, that is rotating counterclockwise. All right, that's the main jet stream. So let's first go upstream and look at the Pacific Ocean, okay? This is a raging jet, but when it gets to the south of, of the Gulf of Alaska, it splits to the north and to the south. And then off Baja, we have, right over Baja, we have an upper level low which is taking that southern stream down and around and back up into the, uh, let's call it the Ohio Valley to the south of the Great Lakes. And we have the northern stream also coming in and meeting that jet stream. So the, two, the jet stream splits and then rejoins to the south of the Great Lakes. And that is what's causing this uh, jet streak right here into the Atlantic. And then out in the northern Atlantic, the jet stream is raging as strong as it is in the Pacific. So we have a lot of disruption over the U.S. as far as the jet stream goes. It's producing more of a meridional pattern. Um, if you want to see that big snowstorm, we're going to need some blocking in the northern Atlantic. Something to slow this jet stream down and uh, buckle it so that it spills into the, into the eastern U.S. and stays in that location. Right now we don't have that. Most of our systems have been very progressive, really quick forming lows that speed off out to sea. Um, much like the, the lows involved in last Thursday's uh, rain and what's going to be involved for tomorrow. So enough about 250 millibar. If we go down to 500 millibars, you can see the outline of the trough here that is uh, spilling into our region. And right now we have a very strong high. Um, I want to say it's near western Kansas, Colorado. Right now it's still actually sinking a little bit, but that's what's driving the cold air at the surface into the region. Um, but the lar larger and more important picture is this big trough that's going to swing into the region um, starting tomorrow afternoon, and that's going to keep us very cold through about Thursday morning. Uh, I believe the coldest point will be tomorrow night into Wednesday morning, but the overall period from, from tomorrow afternoon through Thursday looks very cold, very below average for this time of year. And we'll go down to 700 millibars, which is a, a close match to 500. You can see the outline of the trough, but let's switch over to temperature mode. Now, the division between green and blue represents above and below freezing temperatures at 700 millibars. That's 10,000 feet up in the atmosphere, so very high. It's expected to be cold that high, but you can see New Jersey is... Uh, almost below freezing already at that level. Let me back up a little bit so you can see it better. There's New Jersey. So the cold air is already coming in uh, at the 700 millibar level. Now let's go down to 850 millibars, which is 5,000 feet above sea level. Here you can see the line of freezing is still way back by the Great Lakes, and this is because of the warm air advection that's coming in in the warm sector ahead of, the, of this low right here. Uh, you can easily see the high pressure here and it's anti-cyclonic uh, nature and force that, that's basically opening the gates from, from the Arctic regions up here and allowing it to spill southward. So again, at, at 850, 850 millibars, line of freezing back, back to the Great Lakes. Now this line of freezing, the 850 millibar line of freezing, is generally the difference between rain falling and snow falling depending on what side of the line of freezing you're at now it's not the surface line of freezing it's the 5,000 feet up line of freezing so if this line crashes through New Jersey tomorrow before the rain has finished we will see the rain end as snow and let's go down to the surface here's the surface line of freezing also back by the Great Lakes so this earth wind map is a really cool project it's basically the GFS and when I look at it in its very first frame it's sort of a general reference of what's going on right now but since it is a model uh, I can fast forward and we can watch this line of freezing 
slowly approach. Now this is tomorrow at 7 a.m. See the line of freezing at the surface still hasn't even made it to New Jersey. So any anything falling tomorrow morning is going to be rain and it's going to um, obviously just, there's no snow accumulating. Let's go to 10 a.m. and we're in, line of freezing is into northwest Jersey. Let's go to uh, 1 p.m., a little further south. And then it really starts advancing 4 p.m. By uh, 7 p.m., it looks like all of New Jersey is below freezing. Here's the cold front way out in the Atlantic that's, that's already pushed pretty far out by 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, if we go up at 850 millibars, you'll see that that comes through earlier. Uh, let's see, so this is 10 a.m. By 10 a.m. tomorrow, the the 850 millibar line of freezing, again, 5,000 feet up, is, is almost through New Jersey. Um, by 1 p.m., it's completely through. And this is when that, that ending precipitation tomorrow will come through and possibly end as snow. It's not really a big deal tomorrow. Um, the most we have talked about is maybe a half inch on non-paved surfaces. Um grassy surfaces and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, this is a really cool tool. It's the earth wind map. I love using it. Again, you can see lines of freezing. You can go into the ocean and let's see, let's do sea surface temperature anomalies and we'll go back to now. So seeing sea surface temperature anomalies allow you to see, uh, what type of Enzo state is here. Where it's La Nina or El Nino, uh, you can look at, at, at the blob and the warm blob here in the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, this should be a major driver this winter as far as um, storm activity. You can see the very above average temperature anomalies here off of New Jersey, off the entire East Coast for that matter. So any low pressure systems that, that track, you know, off, off Outer Banks into this benchmark area. You know, that's the track that we need for a big snowstorm. This warmer water is a double-edged sword. When we have our easterly wind component to the north of a low, it brings in that warmer air and it changes everybody to rain. But once the storm gets out here, then you have north flow over New Jersey, right? So the, the when the low's over this warmer water, you could have increased cyclogenesis, meaning a rapid intensification of, of a low. It's uh, winter. It's winter time, snow time. So this water is way too cold for a tropical system, but the warmer waters can still intensify a low that is passing over it. So you get a stronger system with more snow on the backside. So it leads to that double-edged sword: uh, a little bit warmer as the system approaches, but colder and snowier as the system pulls away. So it's something we're going to have to watch this winter. Um, as far as the cold goes tomorrow, though. I, I just want to mention a few things. Um, check on your elders. Make sure your pets and uh, small human beings are inside. Um, this is going to be very, very cold. Uh, this would be cold for even January. Um, the way it looks, today it made it up into like the upper 50s, lower 60s even. And it's probably going to hang near 50, upper 40s or so uh, through the rainfall tomorrow. I expect temperatures to drop about 20 degrees during the rainfall and then another 20 degrees overnight. So many places could see a drop of 30 to 40, degree, 40 degrees from you know how warm we got today and where we are now versus where we're going to be tomorrow night. I think tomorrow night the northwest Jersey elevations have no problem going into the uh, teens and uh, possibly some of the pine barren areas. The, the pine barrens have very sandy soil, so the heat escapes quicker. And in, in places where you have smaller pine trees, like the pygmy pine forest, the heat escapes even quicker um, than just having sandy soil alone. So there, there's a spot, there's a spot by the intersection of Route 72 and Route 539 in Ocean County. It's a pygmy pine forest, and it always um, it is a few degrees cooler than everybody around. So an area like that, I'm probably going into the teens tomorrow night. And by the time everyone wakes up on, on Wednesday morning, um, but most twenties for, for most of, of, uh, South Jersey. Otherwise, uh, again, you know, 
do everything you have to do as if it was a January Arctic blast. Run your trickle your sinks maybe so your pipes don't freeze. If you have any garden hoses that are still connected outside, you might want to turn them off at, at the uh, at the um, valve, you know, right up against the house. Maybe disconnect the hose. Uh, things like that you're you're going to want to do for this this next cold blast. The good news is we do moderate for the weekend. Um, but it's a very active pattern, like I mentioned in, in my prior video the other night. Very active pattern, and uh, you know some of these systems we're going to have to watch to see if they're cold enough for snow. But you know I'll be tracking, and uh, yeah, so everybody be safe and have a great night.